I really didn't know what to expect going into this. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys, Jason, KM4ACK. Over the last few years, we've looked at quite a few lithium iron phosphate batteries on this channel. One style of battery that I haven't had a chance to take a look at though, is these self-heated batteries. So when Vader reached out to me and asked me to take a look at this self-heated 100 amp hour battery, I absolutely had to say yes, because I'm curious, just how well does that self-heater work? Now this is a Group 31 size battery. It comes in at around 23 and a half pounds. The dimensions on this guy are seven inches by roughly 13 inches, and it's about uh, not quite nine inches tall. So I did the normal capacity test on this battery using the MakerHawk battery tester. I set that to 10 amps and it took about 10 hours to completely discharge this battery from full. I was pleasantly surprised to get just over 104 amp hours out of this battery. So it definitely passes the capacity test. And they've put a few little details on this battery things you might overlook at first, but absolutely come in handy. For instance, these little plastic caps that are on the post of the battery, they may seem petty, but they help to prevent this battery being shorted out by something getting dropped on top of these terminals. Another thing they have that I think is a nice little touch, it's got a great carry handle, but maybe you don't need the carry handle if you're gonna set this thing in place and kind of leave it there as more of a permanent installation. In that case, you can simply wiggle these little straps right off of the battery. If you decide you want them again at a later date, you can pop those right back in. So it's a little detail, but those little touches really make this thing nice. Now, the manual on this thing is one of the better manuals I've seen. One of the things that was really interesting, they've got all kinds of charts in this, uh, in the manual, but one of the things that I was really interested in looking at was the difference in temperature discharge curve. If you take a look at that chart, you'll see that anything above probably 20 degrees Celsius, we should expect a full 100% out of this battery. But as you start dropping down to colder temperatures, say at zero degrees Celsius or at freezing, then we can only expect about 90% out of this battery. And if we drop that down to negative 10 degrees Celsius, well, you're gonna short yourself by about 25%. This, uh, according to that discharge curve, you're only gonna be, see about 75% of the full capacity when you get down that cold. Speaking of the cold, the main thing I was interested in seeing in this battery was how well that self-heating thing worked. All right, I've gotta interrupt myself right here. I made some bad assumptions and thankfully, I've got a good group of patrons that call me out on it. So I went back and double checked some stuff. Let's talk about the way the self heater works in these batteries because I didn't fully understand this and then I ran into a bad piece of test equipment and that set me back a little bit further. The self heaters in these batteries only work from external power. They do not draw any power from the, the battery itself. Now, I read through the manual, it says you need at least 10 amps coming into the battery from a charging source. That can be a wall charger or that could be solar input, but it needs at least 10 amps to do that. When the battery is below freezing and that power is applied to it, then it uses that external power to power the, the heating films in these batteries to bring the batteries up to a safe temperature where it's good to charge them. So let's jump over to the workbench real quick and let me show you guys this, uh, these heaters in action. All right, as you can see, the battery is at 19.76 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 6.8 degrees Celsius. Let's go ahead and connect this to the battery. We should hear the charger kick on, and we did get the little red light right over here in the corner. And we will sit here and watch this thing as the temperature starts to climb. 
Now you'll notice that we have no current going into the battery itself. So the power that's being applied to this is just being used for that heating film that's inside this battery. So I'm gonna let this thing run for a couple of minutes here. We'll kind of fast forward through the video, but you'll be able to watch that temperature start climbing on the battery. Okay, so I've cut out some of this to not bore you guys to death, but as you can see by the timer up in the top corner there, top left corner, I'm a little over 10 minutes into this video clip. The temperature right now is 28.22 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 2 degrees Celsius. So I'll check back with you guys in just a second. We'll let this play out a little longer and see if it definitely goes to charging the battery right above 32 degrees. All right, so we've just crossed the freezing point. I am not seeing current yet going into that battery. So I'm going to let this run for a couple more minutes and let's see when it starts charging that battery. And it looks like just past 41 degrees Fahrenheit, the battery has started taking a charge. So they do have a safety measure built in so that it's not charging just above freezing, but it does give it a little bit of safety uh, margin there before it starts charging. All right, so as you can see, it took me a couple of tries to get this video right, but I definitely wanted to make sure that I was testing this thing the way it's supposed to be tested and that I covered all of the bases. And I can safely say now, this will absolutely pass the self-heating test that I ran on this battery. Huge shout out to those patrons for keeping me honest. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.